You know variables, you know loops, but when you sit down to write a program, you don't know where to start. This is the screencast for you. This is Blank Editor. Hello and welcome to Blank Editor, I'm Al Swigert, and in this episode we're going to be working on Project Euler Problem 5. Here's the problem. It says that 2520 is the smallest number that can be divided by each of the numbers from 1 to 10 without remainder. Let's check to see if that's true. So 2020 divided by 1, that's a whole number, and divided by 2, that's a whole number, and 3 and 4, these are all whole numbers. Let's go ahead and just do a loop instead of typing these out. That's right, these are all whole numbers, there's no remainder for any of them, so this is correct. The question they're asking us is, what is the smallest positive number that's evenly divisible by all the numbers from 1 to 20 instead of just 1 to 10? So let's go ahead and get started from a blank editor. Now what I want to do here is, I want to create some sort of function that can tell if a number is divisible uh, by all the numbers from 1 to 20. I'll just set this off as a little helper function, and then I want to start at the number 1 and check if it's divisible by all the numbers from 1 to 20, and if it's not, then I want to increment that number. And because we want to find the smallest number, we can stop as soon as we find a number. So if we found the number, stop. So how can we tell if a number is divisible by a number, another number? Now you can see what we did here was we just divided these numbers and then saw if they had just zero after the decimal point, that these are whole numbers. But we need to break this down into Boolean logic, and we can do that with the mod operator. So the division operator, is the slash, so 21 divided by 7 is 3. But the mod operator, which is the percent sign, is sort of the remainder operator. So 21 divided by 7 is 3 remainder 0. The percent sign mod operator is what will get you that 0 part. You can see 22 divided by 7 is going to be 3 remainder 1, so mod 7 is going to be 1. Now we can tell a number is evenly divisible if modding it by the other number results in zero. So let's create our helper function right here. We'll just define this function. Let's give it the name is divisible 1 to 20. And we're passing it in some number, and this function will return true or false. True if it's divisible by all the numbers 1 to 20, otherwise false. So we're going to do something like what we were doing right here. We want to mod it by 1, and then mod it by 2, mod it by 3, and we'll just go ahead and do that all in a loop just to save us a bunch of typing. So I'm going to say for i is iterating over the range and starting at 1 and going all the way up to but not including 21, so it stops at 20. And we want to check if the number mod i, if that does not equal 0. So if this condition is true, then we know that we found something that is not divisible by the numbers 1 to 20. So we're going to return false. But if it manages to get through this entire loop without returning false, then none of these numbers triggered this condition. So we can say that yes, it was divisible by all the numbers 1 to 20. So in the main part of the program, we'll start off a variable number starting at 1, and then we want to enter a loop. And we'll just make this an infinite loop so that it keeps incrementing. And then we want to check if this number, if it's divisible, by 1 through 20. So we'll pass it to is divisible 1 to 20, and if this returns true, then we found the first and also the smallest number that's evenly divisible by all the numbers from 1 to 20. So we can go ahead and break out of that loop. Otherwise, if that's false, what we want to do is increment the number, just add 1 to it. And then it'll loop back over and keep checking if that number is divisible from by all the numbers from 1 to 20 and keep incrementing and then rechecking and then incrementing and rechecking until finally it'll execute this break. 
And at that point, it'll con the execution will continue past the while true statement, and we can print out the contents of number, which will store our answer. Let's go ahead and run this. And after a long time of number crunching, you finally get the answer, 232,792,560. Let's check if this is the right answer. And it is. So this is a little less than ideal because it takes so long to run. Let's think of ways that we can improve the execution speed of this program. Now you might realize that whatever number that you're checking, it's going to have to be divisible by 1, but all numbers are divisible by 1, so we could just start this off at 2 right here. And since all numbers have to be divisible by 2, then the number that we're checking should always be an even number. So let's just start this off at 2 and then always increment it by 2 each time. So we don't even bother checking the odd numbers. But if we think about it a little bit more, the number that we're checking always has to be divisible by 20. So really, we should just go ahead and start at 20 and then keep incrementing it by 20 each time. So we're only going to be checking the numbers 20, 40, 60, 80, and so on. Now already, this is much more efficient than checking 1, 2, 3, 4. It's already 20 times faster. So let's go ahead and run this program now that we've made these changes to it. And you can see we've calculated the same number, but in a fraction of the time. 